Hallelujah. Shall we pray? Our internal rock of ages, we thank you tonight. We bless your name. We give you all praise because you are the Lord. Hallowed be thy name, O God our Father, in Jesus' name. You have kept us from that month of Holy Communion. Since last month till this day, Father, you have been our guide, our shield. You have been our helper and our provider. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Father, we lay down before this hour. All we come is to partake of the communion that you establish yourself, Lord Jesus. Let's have an encounter in Jesus' name. Thank you this moment as we go with you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Let's have a seat. Welcome me again in the name of the Lord Jesus to the Holy Ghost service of the month of January. Believing that the name of the Lord be glorified and can be glorified in Jesus' name. But before we go into the service proper, um, we have received an information from Jehovah Vasia of the Redemption of God Worldwide that there will be fasting for this year, which starts on the uh, 11th of this month. And it's only for 50 days, only. Only for? Just try 50 and put only behind it. So we know it's not far. And God will grant us the strength and the purpose by which, for the reason that is established, will be a portion for the goodness of it in Jesus' name. So be prepared. You can eat as many double or triple meals from now till Tuesday. So you can be well energized before that time that even if you don't eat so the essence that you have taken will not begin to melt hallelujah and secondly when i was ministering on wednesday i was talking about pastor simon i said that i was looking for a word said uh, and i said i use the word pride to him it's not pride to him it's a man that is i don't want to say a hard man that when he says no you can easily change it but God has been working with him now. So don't see him outside because you don't see shoulder pat on his shoulder. I said, uh, I thought they say you are proud. But, but those days, I mean, those that knows him then knows that it's a hard man that when he says no, you know it's no. <laughs> and he can fight for him. He can fight to defend anything. God bless you. I will give God the glory for your life, sir. So don't quote me and say, Pastor Daniel said, Hallelujah. Tonight, the Holy Communion night, the topic that God set before us is a question. And the question is, what is serving God means to you? What does it mean to you? Are you serving God like doing God a favor? Are you serving God because others are just serving God? Or are you serving God because they need for you to serve him? I was somewhere some times ago and somebody was looking at Nigerians. Ah, Nigerian serves God in that country, that kind of thing. And I laughed. I see why we did not serve God with all their heart. Because over there they believe God for everything. What do you mean by everything? Everything. You own a car. You need divine protection. If you can't go for God, so they go for native own, right? Because every night when you sleep, you'll be looking through the window. You are traveling. You need God. I remember those days, even when things are not as bad like this. We enter a transportation vehicle to go to another state. You see somebody say, let's pray. How many of you know those days? No, not people like you. You have been out for that country for a while. You still do it? They will say, let's pray. Because anything can happen on the way. Somebody was joking the other sometimes they go. He said, when you hear in Nigeria that there's an accident, you hear police report. But as soon as there's a commercial box accident, when the police people came comes there, what they look for is the socks, the bags, those travelers that carry money. But in the police report, you never see thirty thousand was recovered. You only hear fifty souls we are lost. So there's a need. 
You went for exams. You passed the exams. For you to be placed in the right position, you need God. You get a job. To be promoted, you need God. So in all aspects of the life of everybody, God is in need. Then I somebody sent me a picture of a medication that was sold. A sealed one. That you have to press it out as if though, and by the time they press it out, it was nail that came out of it. Another one, it was cotton wool that was just wrapped. Somebody who had just swallowed cotton wool, thinking he has taken medication. But the difference over there and here is that we believe that security is sure. I have 911 beside my table or my phone or my bed. Anything I die, 911. Or some also believe that if I need anything. It's either I walk, I save, or I do overtime, or credit card will take care of it. So it makes us feel relaxed as if God is not serving God, is not a need. But you have forgotten that God, Jesus Himself, said in John chapter 4, He said, God is looking for people who worship Him in what? In spirit and in truth. In truth means. The moment they agree, we'll serve God, whether come rain, whether come shine, whether it's okay, it's not okay. They are ready to serve God. I was talking in my office two days ago. I was just talking about weather. I just came in and I said, ah, today it's even a bit better. Ah, they say it's not better, it's cold. I just laughed. Because the agreement I have with God, this time, this time, this time of the week, I have to go and pray. Even if it's cold, there are times I won't feel my air like this. I'll tap my, I won't feel it. I have to. But when you see it as if though you are doing God a favor, then you sort it out. How many of you can tell me today that eating when you are hungry is you are doing the seller a favor? Is that right? When you are hungry, is eating food doing the seller a favor? You see it as a need. So we begin to look at the sign on the fear trap. You begin to look at the road sign on the way. Oh, there's McDonald's in the next two exits. You, are, you begin to calculate how long we get there because it's a need for you to eat at that moment. But guess what? Most of us don't know that serving God is not a joke with God. How do I know that? In Exodus chapter 7 verse 1, it told Moses, he said, go and tell Pharaoh, let my people go that they may serve me. Let my people go that they may serve me. This is verse 2. You shall speak all that I commanded thee and O Aaron, your brother. Exodus 7, 1 and 2. Go to 8, 8, 1. Exodus 8, 1. Exodus 8, 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, go to Pharaoh and say unto him, Thus says the Lord, let my people go, that they may do what? Verse 9, Exodus chapter 9 verse 1 says the same thing again. Exodus 9 verse 1, what does it say again? The Lord said unto Moses, go to Pharaoh and tell him, Thus says the Lord, the God of Hebrews, let my people go, that they may do what? And say Exodus 9 13 again, what does it say again? Exodus 9 verse 13. The Lord said unto Moses, Arise early in the morning, stand before Pharaoh, and say to him, Thus says the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may do what? So the reason for God asking for their freedom is what? To serve him. The reason why he's talking today to the Pharaohs of your life, talking to sickness in your life, Talking to depression in your life. Talking to loneliness in your life. Let her go. Let him go. Let them go. That they may do what? Serve me. But guess what at this age? The moment we get the freedom, we forget about serving him. We forget about what? We forget about serving him. As if though, what is save us for is for our own pleasure. 
But Romans, uh, Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. Revelation 4, 11 b says, He created all things for his pleasure. And by his pleasure we exist. He created us all. Is it that word, dear Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power? For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they were, and they were created. The reason why God created you at the beginning is for his own pleasure. Not for your sake, not for yourself. So the moment you are unplugging God's service out of your calendar, the moment you are giving timetable to God's service out of your calendar, you are telling God, God, you know what? All that I am is by my making. Oh, have you not read Luke chapter 12 from verse 13? Luke chapter 12 from verse 13. The story of a fool, of a fool, a rich fool that the Bible was talking about. A rich fool. Go to verse 14. Let's pick from verse 14. And he said unto man, Who made me a judge over the divider of you? Of the rich fool, that should be 15. Luke chapter 12. From 16. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a rich man brought forth plentiful. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. Look at what that's saying. Then he said, This I will do. I will pull down my barn and build a greater one. And there I will bestow, my, I will bestow all my fruits and all my goods. And I will say to my soul, Thou hast much good laid up for many years. You have a lot in your 401k. You have a lot in your retirement package. It's just for you to plan how you are going to enjoy it, spread it for all over. Take thy ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night your soul shall be required of thee. This same night, because God heard from his mouth that all that he has, he has kept the glory back on himself. But you have forgotten that James chapter 1 17 says, All good things, all good gifts, everything that can be a good or things that are good, every perfect thing, perfect gift, is it they come from above, from the Father of light, with whom there's no variableness or the shadow of turning. 1 Corinthians 4 7 also say that what do you have that you do not receive? And if you receive, why are you boast? Boast me about them. He said, Who make you? What makes you differ from others? What do you have that you do not receive? And if you receive, why do thou proud about the sieve though you do not receive it? Your life is a gift. And the reason why he gave you that life is for its own pleasure and its own purpose. If he doesn't need you, he doesn't create, he won't create you. He will not have created you if he doesn't need you. He knew he needs you, that's why he created you. And when he created you, you are like a doll. And he gave you something to leave. He gave you his bread. So you can leave. So the bread you are having daily belongs to him. Serving him is never a pleasure to him. Say, God, you know what? I've served you now. I've gone to church. I've done this. I've done that. I've done that. If you don't give me what I'm asking for, I will stop serving you. Come on. The angel says, the Bible says that in Revelation, it said the angels in heaven, 24 hours a day, plus the four elders, they are worship non-stop. Non-stop. 24-7. But here you are. Multiply your two hours. Don't even call it two hours because at times your two hours is not full on Bible study. Because at times you are in and out. At times you came late. Calculate that in a week. Plus your Sunday service. Multiply them together. Put additional one hour plus to it. Plus or minus. Look at how many hours a week. When the angels have no sin. They are always there before him, giving him the worship that is his food. So for him to even extend to you to ask you to worship him, to serve him, 
is a pleasure to us. And until we children of God come to a point in time where we know with understanding that my serving God is not that I'm really God a favor, but it's a need for me to do it for him. It's a need for me to do what? Do it for him. There's no child of an age parent that will take care of the age parents if the child not see it as a need for me to take care of my parents when they are age. But when he or she sees it as a need to take care of my age parents, come what may, you'll be finding resources, finding how to happen, finding how you can make them comfortable. But if you see that well, they have lived their life. Even if I send the red to them, it's a favor. It's a favor. They should consider it a good thing. Then at times you might even pick your checkbook to write hundred dollars. You might say, "This is even too much at this time. I have things, some things to do." You change it to fifty dollars. You send it. Say that you know what? It's a privilege for me to even give them something. But the moment you know there's a need for me to do it, you will see the age parents, even at their dying bed. God, help me bless this, my son. God. Never let him suffer. They might not even tell you why they'll be communing with God. Their last word on earth, my end ought to be God. This boy must be fulfilled. This girl must be fulfilled. Because he also sees as a need. Until you bring yourself to a point in time where you know that serving God is a need for you and your future. Joshua said in Joshua 24 15, he said, Whosoever God you, you and your father want to serve, you can go ahead and serve them. He said, but for me and my household, we shall do what? You can choose any God you want to serve. Like the God of the other side of the river. You can choose it. But for me and my household, he knows there's a need. David said, my heart pants. My heart is panting like a deer. I mean, I'm thirsty of serving you. It says in Psalm 121, it says, My heart is glad. This is 122. It says, My heart is glad when they say, Let us go to the house of the Lord. I'm so happy. I'm so excited when they say, Let's go to the house of the Lord. What happened these days? Brother Sunday, let's go to church. I'm tired. I think we went wrong yesterday. We went to last week. We went when? Last week. But tell the same person what that person likes. Even if it's a program in the TV. Or tell that person if that person likes mo- going to movie. And tell you, we went to one yesterday. They will say, but that yesterday is it's, it's another movie. The one we are going to is a fresh one. Just to prove why they need to go. Until we get to know that serving God is a need. You know, no matter how late you came back from work yesterday because of traffic, what happened the following morning? Eh, what happened the following morning? But the traffic you went through yesterday when you are coming back from work yesterday is so serious. But the second morning will happen. It's a new day. If your son tells daddy, but you came back late yesterday, but, but you came very late yesterday, he said, no, no, I still have to go. It's a need for me to go. Tell yourself and your friends, serving God is not that you are doing God a favor. It's a need. And because a need, that's why Jesus, when God came, he sent Jesus. The Bible says, send forth his son that whosoever believeth in him will not perish. The moment you believe in him, that's why he also was saying in John chapter 14 verse 1, he says, do let your child be troubled. Believe, trust me, believe in me. Believe in me. I'm going to take you to a better place at the end of the day. But do you really believe in him? I was looking at Matthew 26 from verse 26 to 28 about the Holy Communion. Jesus, the Bible says, <laughs> and as they were eating, Jesus took the bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and says, take, 
eat. This is my body. He took the, and he took the cup he, and, he gave, and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament which is shed for many for the remission of sins. And look at the, last, the next verse. But I say unto you, I will not drink but I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth on this foot of this vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. And he went by my side by saying again that when you are doing this, you are doing it in remembrance. It's to refresh your brain. It's to renew your strength in him. But do we believe it? Is the question. Zechariah 9 11 says, by the reason of this same blood, by the reason of this same blood, I will bring deliverance to come. I will bring freedom to come from bondage. As for thee, by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy, pri thy prisoners out of the pit wherein there is no water. By the reason of this same blood, I will bring deliverance from prisoners. And today we still didn't see this as a need until we come to that point where we know that this is a need for me, not something that I'm doing God a favor. There was a time I was in a, in a, in a, in a mechanic shop and the owner, of the, boy, the owner of the place was educating his boys, not knowing that I was hearing. He was telling his guys, he said, you know what, if any, ma any woman brings a car here, make sure you find something to show her that needs to be fixed. He said, that woman will not have peace of mind until she will bring it back quickly. So when any woman drive the car to the shop, they will jack it up, begin to look for, you know, what do you know about you? Some people even they just go, but come and see this one. You see this? This is supposed to be up there, but it's facing down. From that moment, the woman will see it as a need to be done. Until you see yourself that you need all you can get from Christ. And he gave this to us in John chapter 6 from verse 3. John 6 from 53 to 57. It says, until you take part of me, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. Except you take this thing to yourself. Whosoever eats my blood, whosoever eats my body and drink my blood, we have eternal life. And I'll raise him up at the last day. Guess who was talking here? Jesus. C56. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I what? And high in him. As I succeed by the Father, as I have succeed by the Father that sent me, as I live by the Father that sent me, ye also shall live. And we ignore all these words of Christ. We think it's a pleasure we are doing to God. Shall we rise? Do you know what God will look at some of us to be? There are some medications that they give to some patients. They will say, take this early in the morning before you eat. How many of you know that they take it serious? How many of you know that people take it serious? There was even a family I went visit you some time ago, and the man was saying, oh, is it three o'clock yet? I said, well, is it three o'clock yet? I was they say ah, there's a medication I have to take exactly three o'clock. As if though it must not be over five minutes. So when the medication was brought, put him by his side, waiting for three o'clock. Even though it's some minutes to three, but since three o'clock I have to take it. So what waiting for that three o'clock to take it? Who told them? A human being. But Jesus said in his word, when you take this. You overcome your enemies by me. When you take this, I will dwell in you. And when I'm in you as the light of the world, darkness cannot complain over you anymore. And we still don't believe him. Let's bow our heads and talk to him. Ask him for mercy. Lift up your brothers and sisters that yet to believe in him. 
that are here to believe his word. Lift them up in prayer. Say, Father, touch them. Touch my fellow brothers and sisters. Touch them to know, to be able to know that serving God, serving you, serving you or serving God, is not we are doing God a favor. But it's a need that we ought to. Partaking of the Holy Communion is a need for our own life. It's a need to bring light into our life. To bring strength from within to us. As you are praying for yourself, pray for your brothers and sisters. That will believe God more. Jesus said, trust me, trust my words. Trust me and trust my words. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. But one thing about the Holy Communion, as you just read in John chapter 6, 57, he meant it. When you partake of the Communion, you are bringing Jesus to yourself. But Jesus is light and will not come to dwell in a heart that's full of darkness. So if you are here, you are yet to know him or accept him as your Lord and Savior. And you're not ready to repent now at this moment to call him to to invite him to, to come into your life I advice not to partake of it just tell him you're not ready yet just tell him you're not ready yet but if you want to help yourself it takes a moment to just say god i've been living my life contrary to your own word contrary to your own will contrary to what you have said but today father i'm surrendered to you take me over from now and be my lord and my savior be my Lord and my Savior. If there be any of sorts here today and you want me to pray for you, just wave here you are so I can know you need me to pray for you. If you are hearing me, just if you are hearing me either in your house, in your bathroom, or your kitchen, or wherever, just go on your knees and surrender to God. Say, God, you know what? I'm taking over, I'm handing over for you to you. I've been taking care of my life by myself, thinking I'm doing myself a favor. But Father, from now, I want to surrender to you. The rest of us just stretch what has to this altar today. I say, Father. I'm here to partake of your body and I'm here to drink of your blood. I sanctify this in your name as I receive it. I want to receive it with thanksgiving, Father. Let it do that which you intended to accomplish in my life to the glory of your kingdom. Thank you, blessed Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And so, Father, we thank you tonight to bless your name. We give you all the glory because you are the Lord. All we ask for tonight, Father, that you sanctify this. And let you accomplish the purpose of which you originated it in the name of Jesus. Glory be to the name of the Lord. As we shall receive from you with thanksgiving. Father, let you accomplish your purpose. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.